Kelly, please. Thank you, Ms. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and Ms. Creedon. Senator Kyle, thank you for being here. Uh, Ms. Ms. Creedon, I wa want to, well, first of all, thank the commission and thank both of you for all the hard work it took to put this <clears throat> report together. Um, and I would like to note that the report specifically recommends, and I quote, that the United States prioritize funding and accelerate long-range non-nuclear precision strike programs to meet the operational need and in greater quantities than currently planned. So I want to highlight that the SM-6, Standard Missile 6, is a U.S.-produced, ship-launched, it's anti-air, it's anti-surface, uh, and it's a weapon that's manufactured in my home state and Senator Kyle's of, of Arizona. And it's the only weapon in the inventory that can take out a hypersonic missile. The SM-6, it's, it's sort of like three missiles in one. It's the only weapon that can perform anti-air, so surface-to-air warfare, ballistic missile defense, and also have a surface-to-surface -surface mission. The Commission's report also notes that the Secretary of Defense needs to direct research development, test and evaluation into advanced integrated air and missile defense capabilities, leveraging all domains, including land, air, sea, and space. So based on the capabilities of the SM6 and your findings in the report, what specific recommendations do you think Congress should prioritize to ensure that the U.S. is prepared to defeat threats from Russia, China, Iran, and any other adversarial regimes that emerge? Thank you, Senator Kelly. The, um, the, regional, the regional fights, the theater fights, the, working, the, the need to work with our allies, um, making sure we have missile defense, not just at the national level against ballistic missiles, but having these capabilities to defeat the cruise missiles, to defeat the, the, the long-range hypersonics. And then we also have to think about how we think about these things. We need these systems. We need these capabilities for the theaters. Both theaters are, I mean, they're very different, but particularly in the Asia Pacific theater, given the size of the theater, given that we don't have a NATO alliance, we have great allies, but not, not together. We need to join with these allies. We need to train with these allies. We need to have de co-development programs. We need to have them very integrated to do all of the things that that you highlight, be, to be able to effectively um, put together regional deterrence, um, put together regional offense. So research and development is also um, very important as we think about how we move forward, how we modernize our systems, how we bring in innovation to, to, to make sure that we have the necessary capabilities in both theaters. So I, you know, we, we fully support all of the, the work at, at this, but you know, again, as we said, we didn't pick winners and losers. We have capabilities and certainly the, the system you, you know, the SM6 is absolutely um, in this ballpark, in this niche. And, and, and it's not only about the capability and be, being able to defeat our enemy system, it's also being able to do it at a range that they can't defeat ours. And I've seen this, I was over in Ukraine um, about a month ago and convened a round table of Ukrainian pilots, MiG-29, SU-27 guys. And we talked in detail about this, that how important it is for us to have a capability, a longer stick, let's say, than, 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 than the Russians have. And in some cases, they do not have that now. And I think in some cases, we find ourselves in the same situation. So it's a matter of just continuing to improve this. And, and it's, it goes without saying that the, the conventional deterrent has to be there, because without the conventional deterrent, we rapidly get to the possibility of introducing the theater nuclear in, which we want to avoid, right? So we need that conventional deterrent so we never get to that nuclear war. Thank you. And Senator Kyle, it's great to have another Arizona senator here uh, in committee today. Um, I uh, have a question about electronic warfare, but I'm kind of running out of time. But briefly, it's a you know question about um, electronic warfare and how integral it is to the Western Pacific and China is really doubling down on their EW capability. And we have an asset in Arizona that you're, I'm sure you've visited a number of times, the Fort Huachuca, the electronic proving ground. 
and it's a, it's a valuable asset, and we've got to. So I'm going to submit this one for the record. And, and John, thank you for being here. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Kelly, I might just note that there are several things in our report that discuss this. General Heinton, one of our commissioners, was uh, very helpful in alerting us to several things that we had to be aware of. And we make some specific recommendations regarding, for example, sale of spectrum, which could adversely affect our ability to deal in this particular uh, realm. Thank you. Thank you.